When people ask me who my favourite composers are, it's always difficult to tie it down to a small number. But however small the number, Janacek will be in there. We're going to play some music which I bet the Halle hasn't played for a very long time, if at all. And that is music that comes from one of his greatest achievements, his opera, The Cunning Little Vixen. It started life as a cartoon in a daily paper. And the adventures of Little Sharp Ears, as this vixen was known, were very famous and people used to follow them day by day in the paper. It has such charm and colour and atmosphere to it, like no one else. I always feel that you just need a bar or two of a Janacek score to recognise his sort of trademark, the way the harmony moves, the way the little patterns in the orchestra are repeated, like little buzzing insects. He was, in a way, if you like, trying to humanise the animals. And there are so many different ones in the piece, not just a vixen, but the fox that she eventually marries, a dog, a badger, all sorts of different animals have their own musical personality. But the vixen, of course, is central to it. One day out in the forest, she's captured by a forester and taken back to his home and chained up like a sort of pet. And in that situation, she dreams of what it could be like to grow up and be free and to see your dreams come true. And that's the sort of musical idea that Janacek knew just how to write the music for. Since I was a young man, the music of Shostakovich has meant a great deal to me. In the course of one evening, we're going to play both of his piano concertos. The first one was written for himself, and he could play the piano marvellously. There's wonderful interplay between the trumpet and the piano, and it finishes at a tempo that gets faster and faster and faster, and you think the instruments are just going to come off the platform. We have one of England's most talented young pianists coming to Manchester for this concert, and he hasn't played with me in the Halle before, so I'm really pleased about that. Ben Grosvenor, his name is, and he plays brilliantly. It's lovely because the second concerto was written for an even younger man, Shostakovich's own son, Maxime. This programme actually brings together three of the most important giants of the 20th century. I've spoken about Shostakovich, but close behind him lies the figure of Benjamin Britten. And it's lovely to think that despite the fact that they couldn't speak each other's language, they became friends. So it seems logical that we could finish this programme with one of Benjamin Britten's most popular works, A Young Person's Guide to the Orchestra. The original idea was that in between the various sections that introduced the, the big sections of the orchestra and then the individual members of each section, there would be a text introducing it and talking about the character of the instruments. Nowadays, that text written in the 1950s feels a little bit old-fashioned and not quite what one needs now. So we asked our second horn player, Tom Redmond, who is a man of much brilliance, whether or not he couldn't think up an idea how to do it afresh nowadays to make a great finale to this concert. So he thought that four actors would do the trick and he found them at the Manchester Metropolitan University. And the idea is that these four young people will be dotted around the platform, overseeing different parts of the orchestra and introducing the people around them. So it will have a dramatic theatrical flair to it, as well as being very entertaining. So the fact that we can end this year's programmes, the Thursday night programmes, with a performance of A Young Person's Guide to the Orchestra, is something that gives me great pleasure, because it's a work of such originality and brilliance, and the orchestra play it really well. They love showing off, as it were, instrument by instrument, and they compete with each other. And it's fun to conduct, and it'll be a great joy to bring this new version to the audience. <laughs>